السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and uh, late uh, عيد مبارك to all of you may Allah accept your uh, fasting on the 10 days of the Hijjah and uh, your good deed during the Eid and for the people who finished Hajj may Allah accept their Hajj and for everybody else may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, bless their life wherever they are whatever they do for the sake of God. Today we are talking about have I failed? Failure, talk about failure. We are living in a gloomy atmosphere of a misty weather of the globe, especially the political situation, security situation, and the humanitarian situation. Why I'm saying this after coming here to live in the West uh, in November, Inshallah, I'll be in Birmingham and UK for 40 years. I arrived here in November 1997. 1977, not 97. Before I talk about my failure, as I talk about my aura or my shame before, I will talk about who I am. I was a young medical student who was like anybody else. Like anybody else, like anybody else, uh, anybody else in Cairo uh, in the 60s and 70s wearing the baggy trousers, the wooden sandals, the canary, uh, uh, pink uh, uh, shirts and trousers, like anybody else. When I was qualified from the medical school as one of those uh, good-looking, young, uh, dandy doodoo boys, I had the choice to go to work in Saudi Arabia because my father was working there or to come and carry on my study in UK. My father advised me go for the knowledge, go for the scientific knowledge and go for education. I listened to him and to his mother because it was a dream of my mother. So I came here like uh, there was a movie in, uh, in Arabic called uh, uh, A Farmer in the American University in Cairo. Don't know my front from my back, my right from my left. I failed the exam four or five times, which is the license exam to become a medical doctor. And when I was in Abrestwith in 1978, I read a poster about Christian Medical Fellowship Group meeting. I needed to improve my language, English language, because I passed the medical and I wanted to pass the, uh, the, the English test. I went there. I sat down there to listen, to interact with people, and two girls, one Swiss and one uh, German, uh, wanted to convert me to another religion. Of course, I did uh, become resilient to understand more about Islam. After that, I met somebody from a group called the Moonies, who are a part of Unification Church, and I went down with them to many uh, places when I was in Swansea, when I was in Birmingham, uh, to learn about how can we uh, look at religion from different aspects. They were trying to create a new philosophy or a new religion. When I passed through these two experiences, I realized that I have to go back to understand more about my religion. I passed the exam, and I started working in Scotland, in Glasgow, then I came back to Birmingham since 1981. This is me, the young, smart, baggy trouser, wearing man or wearing uh, this wooden sandal, to start talk about his failure after 40 years of living in UK. 
1984, we started the Islamic Caliph as a response to the famine in East Africa. I'm going to take you with me to all my experience over the last 35 years. Over the last 35 years. Okay? So this is a message to the youth. Okay? We started it spontaneously. Two young students in Birmingham University, one Palestinian, Iraqi, the other one was myself. We went. No vision, no office, nothing. No support, nothing. From door to door, street to street, mosque to mosque, conference, conference, meeting to meeting, and we started this Islamic cliff which stays up till now and working globally in more than 40 countries. It's still considered to be a success story. But it started with 20 pence, with two volunteers, no employees, no big figures behind it. Next, please. When I was in Islamic Cliff, in a very small room, very small room in Mosley Road in Birmingham, we had a dream. Like once upon a time, I was talking to one of my colleagues, a lady. I told her, if you have somebody in the room wearing a very patchy dress, barefooted, living in a room with no windows, with no doors, with no toilets. And this individual, man or woman, thinking about changing the face of humanity, what would you call, what would you call her or him? She said, I call him or her a mad man or a mad woman. The rest of the people in the room were laughing. She told them, why are why you are laughing? She said, because the mad man is standing in front of you. 1989, we were thinking to make something called Islamic Leaf Marathon. Islamic Leaf Marathon. This is not the right for image of the marathon of Islamic Leaf. This is something else. But actually, my colleague, he put this one to show the contribution of Islamic Leaf to London Marathon or to other marathons. So the only one who applied for this marathon was an Englishman, not a Muslim. And then we have to cancel the marathon after taking all the permissions from the city council of Birmingham in 1989. The vision was there to have the marathon, but the ability of Islamic Leaf as a small baby organization was not there. Then the community was not ready for the marathon in 1989. Next one, please. The big jump came same year. We wanted to create to make Islamic Leaf games. Football, basketball, volleyball, uh, kabaddi, uh, badminton, uh, etc., etc. In 1989, again, we had a test case with an organization called Forces of OSIS, Federation of Islamic Student, Student uh, Federation of, of Student Islamic Organization. Student organization. And in April 89, we said, if we'll be able to make a football tournament in Birmingham University, outdoor football tournament, we'll be able to make Islamic Leave games. It was very successful. We found the student traveling from Southampton to Birmingham and from Aberdeen and Edinburgh and Glasgow to Birmingham just to play football. We realized that the youth are in a dire need to support activity. We started 1989 Islamic Leaf Games. It went on till nearly nine or ten years, very well organized for nearly ten years. We moved it from Birmingham Sports Center into the NAC National Exhibition Center in uh, Birmingham, and this is a global exhibition center. And it was a, a pride for the Muslim community at that time to enter the NAC for the whole day. 
We managed to organize it for eight or nine years, and our dream was to make the first Islamic Olympic. But we failed to continue. Because it became a burden on Islamic Cliff to entertain about up to 10,000 people coming on the day, plus the preparation for hundreds of teams, football, kabaddi, tacro, uh, volleyball, uh, table tennis, cricket, even we had a section for the women to play their own sport. Even it was the first fashion show for Muslim women in Birmingham was an Islamic Leaf Games organized by Sister Rahana Sadiq. But it stopped. Too much. But a lot of people now, a lot of organizations are doing games in different parts in uh, UK and Europe. Halal food board. Somebody might say, yes, Islamic leaf is your cup of tea. But what is this? We found that there's a shortage of halal meat in the market. We sat down together as a few individuals with shopkeepers, with people who are running Arptoir to organize this. It took about two years to register the board, but we failed to manage it. So we closed it down. There was a need and still now. You know why was the need? Because the shortage of halal meat in the market. We discovered this in the late 80s. That people are fooling you as a customer and selling non-halal meat in their shops. Muslims are selling non-halal meat in their shops. But now halal meat becomes a, a phenomenon even in Asda, in Tesco, in different uh, uh, big superstores, they are selling it. The first Eid prayer, the first Eid prayer in the whole of UK was organized in Islam. This, 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 this figure, uh, this image is not the one which was 1990. This is a recent one organized by Human Appeal and by uh, uh, Green Lane Mosque in Birmingham. But the first one was 1990. I was in my office in Islamic Cliff, and the young man who was a businessman has a, has a, has a restaurant called Omar Restaurant in Hagley Road in Birmingham. He came and told me, Dr. Ban, I said, what? He said, can we make outdoor eat prayer? I said, why not? I took the idea as a challenge and as a new opportunity for the Muslim community to come out. We went to consult different mosques. They liked the idea, but when they studied it, said, no, you know why? Because on Eid day, it is the income coming to the mosque, and they did not want to lose it. None of the mosques joined us. In 1990, it was the first prayer, 2,500 people only came at that time to Small Heath Park in Birmingham, the same park which is having the 100,000 who prayed Eid prayer this year in Small Heath Park, the largest. So this Small Heath pray, uh, uh, Park pray, uh, pray, Eid prayer started in 1990 with two people. The brother was the Omar restaurant owner, the Pakistani brother, may Allah bless him and his family. Then myself and the Islamic Reef Band and the Khatib, of the first Eid prayer at that time was Dr. Sorti. He is still living with us in Birmingham. Professor Sorti was a professor of Islamic theology in Birmingham University at that time. It was raining, but 2,500, and the, all the media were actually writing about it. So, so what we see today, after 27 years, it started 27 years ago. We could not be able to carry on doing it, but somebody else came later on to do that. Next, please. There's some uh, sequence. Uh, uh, this is uh, before that, 1994. Uh, Islamic Leaf Concert. Islamic Leaf Concert was written in a document that I wrote called the Grassroot. Grassroot means when any community worker will be able to connect, communicate, work, 
and drive and guide the community. It is a document, 40 pages. I wrote it about the relationship between you and the community it should not be one way, it should be dual courage way. Community serves you because you serve the community. Community helps you because you help the community. Community stands behind you because you stand behind the community. Community gave you their sons and daughters because you look after their sons and daughters. Community stand up and uh, 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 adopt what you have because you give them the solution in your ideas. This was written at the back of uh, Eurovision Song Contest. If you remember Eurovision Song Contest, which started in the early 90s, I said, why don't we have, or we said, I don't like to, say the, or to, to use the word say, to have this. And we started something like Islamic Leaf Concert in 1994 in Birmingham, Birmingham, London, then Manchester in one weekend, then after that went to Glasgow and Bradford in the same year. The original idea of it was not a concert, a glamorous concept was to make this kind of competition on the grassroots level in different towns and cities in UK where we ask and encourage community centers and mosques to get the talented singers, reciters of Quran, hafiz of Quran, and reciter of Naat. And the winner of such competition on the regional uh, uh, area come to the Royal Albert Hall in London, which is another dream at that time that the Muslim should enter the Royal Albert Hall, which only was made for the royal family and the aristocrats. Unfortunately, Islamic Youth took it the other way around and make it superstar competition. It went on for a few years, okay? Then it be actually, it became the night of inspiration, okay? Then it stopped, I think, two or three years ago because of the amount of work uh, 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 involved in that. The, does that mean that we failed? No. Many organizations nowadays, whether it's Human Appeal, whether it's Muslim Aid, whether it's Penny Appeal, are following what we started 23, 24 years ago. This is success or failure, something can discuss it later on. The seed was there 23 years ago. Now it becomes a forest, a habitat. You don't have to be the one who managed plantation of the seeds, then manage the habitats, because many habitats about the concert nowadays. 94, anything before 2008? 2008. No, where is the HIV AIDS? It's October and January. No, no, no. So, uh, well, get me uh, HIV AIDS first. Oh. HIV AIDS, it was an idea when I was in Islamic Reef, before I left Islamic Reef, to look and tackle HIV as a disease from the Islamic point of view. And the Islamic Reef had an international conference about HIV AIDS in South Africa in 2007 where about 250 people, uh, organizations, uh, scholars, were there for about a week in Johannesburg to produce a document, okay, about our role to help fighting the disease. You know why? Because once upon a time I was in the airplane, and one of the few times at the time that somebody upgraded me to go to business class. And I was sitting and next, next to me was an Englishman and they would start talking to one another. So I told them about our initiative. said, why? You talk about HIV AIDS. It is not a Muslim disease. I said, what? Has a disease to have a faith? This is a disease for the Muslim. It's a disease for the Christian. This is a disease for the Jews. Flu for the Muslim. Flu for the Christian, flu for the Jews, flu, another flu, it's the same bug, same virus. From that we started to have 
to plan for this conference. It was very successful. Then we changed the conference into an organization registered in the UK. And this organization about 10 international organizations. And we're talking about, let us take $10,000 from each one of you for five years to stabilize the organization in London so we can have an impact on the way we tackle HIV AIDS. Unfortunately, the member organization, our Muslim organization, failed to continue. That's why we have to close HIV AIDS two, three years ago organization. It was a new dimension of putting your views, your philosophy of thinking, your idea about tackling a global epidemic which is affecting Sub-Saharan Africa, South Africa, even the Arab countries, even the Muslim countries. Don't ever deny that there's plenty of Muslims are affected by this disease and this virus. But the Muslim organization at the time failed to contribute $10,000 into the organization. So we close, we have to close the organization. Next one, please. At that time, we were looking at gaps in the globe, especially after September the 11th. We started the discussion of a counter-extremism and terrorism in 2002 with a lot of ambassadors in different parts of the world, especially British ambassadors, Egyptian ambassadors, and others, and Saudi, and uh, European, and etc., and American, and, 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 and. And we have a, an idea of organizing a conference in Cairo called the Cairo Conference to tackle uh, the extremism and terrorism and detaching it from the humanitarian work carried by Muslim organizations. We met uh, President Clinton in London in uh, January, February, February 2005, and he advised us, I was a member of DAC at the time, Disaster Emerging Committee, said, honey, instead of having a big conference in Cairo, make small meeting, small meeting discuss, discussion groups to discuss your idea. And to change it from having the one conference in Cairo into having 14 smaller conferences in 14 countries to come out as the philosophy of the creation of the Humanitarian Forum, which is still standing up till now. But because most of the people, most of the donors do not understand the value of communication, networking, building partnership, building advocacy, making research, it is suffocating because there's no much fund is going into it. Community has to mature to grasp the opportunity which the humanity needs it. Next, please. Muslim Child's Forum was another baby who started in, yeah, officially we started in 2009, to bring Muslim charities in UK together under one umbrella. Because somebody was, was criticizing me, why you bridge the gap in Himatian Forum? Bring Himatian Forum back, please. Yeah. You see, this is the bridge between the, the, the Muslim charities and the non-Muslim charities and government. Okay? And it was the focus, global one. Okay? And this is why I was criticized by some Muslim charities, why you are actually heavily involved with bringing, the building this bridge between the Muslim charities and non-Muslim charities. Why don't you build this one? I said, cool down, we'll do that. We did it. Alhamdulillah, the discussion did not start in 2008. This is the registration. It was in 2008. But the discussion started 2004 and 5 to sit down together and to discuss the issue of how can we communicate, how can we coordinate, how can we uh, uh, exchange the views and build partnership between different Muslim charities in UK. Well, you know why? Because of the competition was very ugly, was very selfish, was very rude between Muslim charities at that time. Now, alhamdulillah, started with five organizations, Islamic Leaf, Human Appeal, Muslim Aid, Muslim Hands, uh, Human Relief Foundation. Okay. Now it's about 17 organizations. 
in the country and the number is growing. Alhamdulillah, is still kicking and alive. And this is something as a byproduct of the maturity of the community and the organization to let this to carry on for the last 10 years. To be the advocate for the Muslim charity sector and nationally and internationally. The Cat House was another initiative that we wanted to make. It's still alive up till now. Okay? It's a hub which has to give the opportunity to the small startup organization who just want a virtual address, a desk space to start with, particularly in London. We succeeded to secure a building in London. Okay? And five or six organizations are in there. We need more. And we need to reform the cat house into starting to uh, make local program for the local community in the country. Still alive. Uh, human uh, uh, Muslim Child Forum is still alive. Human uh, Terrian Forum is still alive with a struggle. Inshallah. Next, please. Somali Relief and Development Fund this 2011, after the famine in, 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 in Somalia. This is an, an, a different dimension. We wanted the Somali organization to come together, the local community, Somali, the Somali local community to come together and to build a coalition. We raised funds, we started to work, but most of the local Somali organizations were not mature enough to understand the dimension of coordination, building partnership, and now it is dormant. It's not functioning because of the maturity, of lack of maturity of the Somali, Somali community. Because what we need, I'm not, I'm not insulting the Somali community, but I'm trying to say that this is a different level where we come together to discuss issue, not to look for fund, not for fundraising. And it's, it's, it's at the verge of being closed down. Next one, please. Uh, uh, YRDF. Yemeni. Why are they for the same for the Yemeni? For the same for the Yemeni. We want the Yemeni to come together. Okay? It happens again, like what happened to Somalia. Community are not ready to sit down together to, to discuss strategically the issue of Yemen. In spite that we have a big Yemeni community in different cities in UK and globally, we have big Somali community in UK and globally, but still at the stage of infancy, each one of them is trying to fundraise for his own little local organization. These two organizations are at standstill. Even when I went back to the Yemeni community and Somali community to come and to activate it, but no. Next, please. No, no, the Muslim Media Forum. Muslim Media Forum was something, it was another dream where we looked at the community and said, what is the strongest element and tool which can drive the community, protect the community, save the community, or defame the community? It's media. For nearly two years, for nearly two years, we had discussion with Muslim TVs, newspapers, magazines, bloggers. Then we agreed to have and to register this Muslim media forum. Then we appointed some intern to look around to make the strategy for the Muslim media forum. When the young lady went to some of those uh, members, uh, she felt that none of them believed in coalition. And those are the media people. And the campaign point to each and every one of them who is still alive nowadays. And who could not be able to kick it off to the second level. In spite of the fact, when this name was made public on a Facebook, a lot of 
big embassies were very interested to sit down with our officer and to invite them to the embassies to see what is the Muslim media forum will do. So the non-Muslim understand the value of the name, but the founding member of the Muslim media forum failed, failed badly to stand for the idea. This is everything. So when we look at these 35 years, in spite of the fact that we only have three on two and a half organization are surviving out of 10 or 11. Is that means failure? No. It means that you are alive, you are kicking, you are trying, you have to go, 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 try, try, try. Don't stop because the community needs new initiatives. The community needs, and this is the message for the youth. If we fail once, so what? If we fail twice, so what? If we fail three times, so what? If we fail hundred times, so what? To succeed once. And this once, this one time of success means could change the society, change the community, change the country, change humanity. Because humanity does not need millions of people to make the change, to create the change. Humanity needs handful of people to start making the process of change. That's why to conclude, when the Prophet وسلم, after 13 years in Mecca, most of the people embraced Islam after his da'wah were about less than 100 people. But the hardcore group could be 10 or 15 after 13 years. Who are we to say that we cannot follow the great examples of the prophets? Even Moses, السلام, after all this time and saving the Israelites, coming to Sinai, then they let him down and they worship the golden calf. And he was fighting with his brother. How many people believed in the message of Moses? السلام, even after seeing the miracles of Moses, after seeing the split of the sea as a support from Allah to Moses, they went to worship gold. Handful of people. Or a dozen of people. With Noah, السلام, few people have been saved with him in the ark of Noah. So really, my brothers and sisters, don't ever let anybody to put you down because you failed once, twice, or but keep focusing on the road. Once you go outside the main road, you will definitely fail. If you fail once or twice on the track, you can stand up and try again, and try again, and try again. If you're playing a soccer game, football, and you keep kicking the ball outside the box, you will never score. You have to score, you have to kick the ball inside the box 100 times to get the scoring goal. Till the last second of the last minute. And this is what we learn from the German machine team. When you play against the German, don't ever believe that you won the match before the referee blow his whistle. Try, 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 and I don't think that we'll fail, and we'll keep trying till Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the sentence of death, and we can meet him with our successful trial our, and our unsuccessful trial. See you tomorrow, inshallah. Same time, exceptionally, because after Eid, okay, 11 o'clock uh, UK time, 1 o'clock back time, to Al-Ghadan, inshallah, هو نفس المعاد الساعة 11 بس المعاد مخصوص عشان العيد الساعة 11 بوقت لندن واحدة بتوقيت مكة في نفس الموضوع موضوع بيتكلم عن هل فشلنا أم لا والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وأراكم غدا إن شاء الله